Again, uh, my name is Jeremiah McGee, Senior Technical Marketing Architect. Um, I only included one blog here. This is the, the Yammer Cloud and AWS blog and my Twitter handle at the McGee. Hi, uh, I'm Ahmad Yunus. I'm a staff, tech, uh, staff uh, cloud architect at VMware. So I work in uh, the hybrid cloud services BU covering HCX. And you could reach out to me on Twitter at Ahmad underscore Yunus or uh, find me on my blog. Okay, and uh, standard disclaimer, uh, we make no commitment or obligation to the items listed in preview or developing status uh, and when it will become available. The information in this presentation is for informational purposes only and may not be incorporated into any contract. Um, I think there might be a couple things on the HCX front that we're gonna talk about that are uh, potentially preview or roadmap. Uh, so again, uh, you know, this fancy uh, slide here, again, jointly engineered service. Um, the idea here, though, is really to think about how we're migrating workloads back and forth. So previously we talked about, you know, data center extension. Uh, now we're talking about large scale application migration and, and how can we accomplish that? And you can see we've added uh, a little bit here. We have these two add-on site recovery, uh, disaster recovery as a service, and then uh, VMware HCX. And so the goal here is to kind of highlight uh, how VMware HCX handles the application migration um, and, and what you need and what you don't need for some of those features to, to work. So first we'll jump into the six R's of cloud migration strategies, just to kind of have an understanding of, you know, what application needs drive certain migration decisions. So the first thing that we have is we'll talk about rehosting, and this is just lift and shift, right? So we're gonna take those VMs and we're gonna forklift them somewhere else. It could be onto another hypervisor, it could be into a cloud provider or um, a partner some hosting company, whatever it is, this is when we're kind of just taking the VM or that workload and, and moving it over and we're not really manipulating it in any way. Then we can talk about replatforming. So maybe uh, we, we, are, we are moving it to a new hypervisor and we have to do um, a little bit of tinkering or maybe we're moving it onto a new platform where we have to you know, change how we do something in the virtual machine, maybe uh, change up its virtual hardware a little bit or do something different to it, uh, adjust it just a little bit so that when we do shift it over uh, that it functions uh, as we would expect it to and performs well. Uh, replacing our applications. This, so this could be, you know, where we've got an application on premises um, and we can use one of our own applications. So we'll talk about, you know, maybe vRealize operations, you're running it on premises, uh, but you want to move to the cloud instance or SaaS offering. So this is where, you know, we're going to replace an application uh, on premises with a SaaS offering, or maybe we're just with another application in general that just exists somewhere else. So Maybe you've got some kind of application for finances or CRM or, or what have you, and it's running on premises. You're going to move it to a new location or a cloud instance uh, and maybe just use a whole new application entirely. So this is going to be just replacing um, our application with a different application. Refactoring. So this is kind of modernizing your applications. This is going to be where we are looking at applications, assessing them on premises, and then moving them to a container, um, you know, or some sort of cloud native application. Uh, this allows us to kind of, you know, modernize those apps and refresh those applications and removing them from the platform that they were before, uh, you know, to, to a new platform. Retiring. So, you know, maybe you've got uh, applications that are sitting on premises today. Um, you're going to move some components uh, of that application or just move uh, other applications out to the cloud and you realize that, you know, this application you don't need or this host you don't need anymore. You're just going to retire it. You know, you're just clearing up floor space um, or, com or compute resources in the, uh, in the vSphere instance. And then lastly, retain. So this is do nothing. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm moving some stuff to the cloud. I may be modernizing some of my applications, but I still have some things sitting in a data center that we're going to leave for now because, uh, you know, they are only on that platform or they can only function in that capacity, uh, or maybe they're, it's just not in the budget or on the roadmap to handle it right now. So they're just going to stay where they're at and we're not going to do anything with them. So these are kind of how we talk about, you know, why are we moving? What are we moving? And what's the best time to, to move something? You know, we could say, 
yeah, we, we want to containerize everything, but that doesn't make sense for all of the applications. So this is where we kind of start to feed things into these different buckets and how we're going to move them around uh, should the need arise or not arise if we're just going to leave it uh, in the data center. So again, this kind of comes back to our hybridity, right? So we talked about this already with VMware Cloud on AWS and hybrid linked mode. And, and again, this, this hybridity is key for uh, virtual machine migration or just migration of workloads in general. Again, not a requirement of VMware HCX, um, they, you know, or a requirement to migrate VMs in general. Again, you can use the API or Power CLI um, or some form of automation to move workloads from on-premises to the cloud without hybrid linked mode. This makes it easier to do from the uh, UI. Uh, and of course, when we talk about VMware HCX, certainly not a requirement. HCX has its own manager and its own console that you can use to handle those migrations without having to worry about the hybrid linked mode uh, side of it. So let's talk about like what our tr traditional migration methods are. So the first one we had, which I demoed was cloud migration. And this is simply, you're powering off a VM, you're moving it to an, um, a new location, and then you are powering it back on, likely changing the IP address, making some modification to it, but you're powering it off. And this is gonna be kind of a non-critical applications, dev test situation. Um, you know, or applications that are kind of low hanging fruit, they don't get used a lot. So we can go ahead and migrate those uh, cold without any issues. Um, of course, you know, this is entailing your downtime. And then next we have vMotion and, you know, again, live migration, this is on-premises to on-premises, on-premises to the cloud. Uh, again, there's caveats here. Certainly you know, vMotions can be sort of intensive um, if you're trying to move them from on-premises to the cloud. And so this is where we require that direct connect for high speed, you know, maximum bandwidth, low latency. And this allows us to very quickly move those workloads over uh, live. So you don't have to worry about the downtime and this could help you with your mission critical applications and making sure they get moved over within a maintenance window, but certainly maintaining that uptime and availability. Next, we have uh, vCenter Converter. And even though this is uh, end of life today, we still use it a lot. And this is where we're going to take um, maybe old legacy environments where we've got some virtual machines out there that we can't really you know, cold migrate or vMotion because they are dissimilar environments and we don't have another way to move them. Or if we're gonna do a P to V, maybe we want to actually move the system from being a physical server to a virtual server in the cloud, we can leverage Converter to kind of handle that for us. Content library, this is a, a, a way to migrate your ISOs and your templates and other miscellaneous files, you know, your gold images, anything that you're using to deploy on-prem today, you can certainly take this, um, create a content library, uh, move all your things into a content library if you're not doing it already on-premises, create a content library in the cloud, subscribe back to on-premises and ingest all of that. So now what we're allowing you to do is basically ingest all of your images, all of your templates into the cloud. Now you can start deploying new workloads out into the cloud without having to think about, well, how do I get these over there? Do I have to FTP them? Do I have to rebuild um, all my templates over again? I don't wanna have to do that. Now they can stay in lockstep and in sync with each other. And then lastly, which we're going to talk about here is, is VMware HCX. And this is sort of, you know, the, the mobility platform for moving workloads uh, to the cloud and giving you a large number of options outside of our traditional options and, and a lot of extra features that, uh, that you guys will absolutely love. So other migration considerations. You know, think about physical hardware sitting in your data center today. Do we want to do a physical to virtual migration um, and get that out into the cloud or even just get it into a virtual um, state in our own data center? And also co-locating equipment for close proximity. So this would be, you know, if you've got like some P-series hardware or some hardware that can't be virtualized for some reason, uh, this is taking this equipment and moving it into a, a colo space, you know, Equinix or, or, or Rackspace or something where you can have it kind of in your next hop, right in line with your direct connect, so you can have high-speed access from that colo equipment or from that physical equipment directly out to the applications that you're putting in the cloud. Uh, things like Active Directory, so infrastructure services, Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, 
you figure out, you know, where where it makes sense to kind of use these things. You know, you could use cloud native services where it makes sense, whether it's uh, using Route 53 for DNS, uh, you know, and kind of offloading there, or standing up a domain controller in your SDDC in VMware Cloud on AWS and kind of having that replication there. So now workloads out in your SDDC are doing local calls, you know, back and forth to that domain controller versus going back across the wire uh, onto your on-premises um, domain controller. And then, you know, load balancing, edge security, various security appliances. These are all things we have to think about migrating. So, you know, do we want to move to AWS Elastic Load Balancing? Do we want to handle like NSX load balancing? Uh, do we have virtual appliances for things? So, you know, if I'm using other vendors, um, other security appliances, you know, whether they're physical or virtual on premises, do we have other options for them? Do we have EC2 instances that we can leverage? Can we uh, deploy these appliances in our SDDC within our exist or within our new cloud environment? Um, this is a good way to kind of offload some of that stuff as well. So just considerations on, on different things that migrate outside of just virtual machines. Uh, you know, this will kind of help fine tune and have things perform better, have traffic flow in the proper directions and have services more readily available depending on, on how you're managing those and where they should live. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Ahmad to talk about the advanced migration methods with VMware HCX. Okay, so if you think about what vCenter is to vSphere, it's that management plane we want to start looking at HCX as the mobility plane that can migrate workloads across any VMware stack, no matter where it is, right? So if you think about some of the legacy, older versions of vSphere that are left behind just because, you know, they're, they're working, no one wants to breathe on them or touch them. Uh, they couldn't upgrade them in time. They're on older versions of hardware. That's the beauty of HCX is we can migrate the workloads that are on those older versions of vSphere to the new modern uh, updated versions of uh, an SDDC. So on premises, we also have conversion. So we have OS assisted migration where we could take VMs running on KVM. So Windows, Linux VMs, depending on the version we can take those VMs and convert them over to vSphere. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So HCX, again, is not only on-premises, but also for VMware Cloud Foundation. Of course, it's an add-on enabled on VMware Cloud on AWS. We also have VMware Cloud provider partners. We have our Metal as a Service, which includes Azure VMware Solutions, Google Cloud VMware Solution, and of course, newly announced uh, VMware Telco Cloud. So HCX spans across all these uh, mobility areas, as long as there is a VMware stack. So as you can see here, I have my source destination or source uh, SDDC, and then I have my destination, which in this case is VMware Cloud on AWS. Now, HCX, like I stated earlier, is an add-on for VMware Cloud on AWS. So the enablement of it is a simple click of a button. You click add-on, it's gonna go ahead and deploy the HCX Cloud Manager within VMware Cloud on AWS. And the only thing left to do after that is to enable the firewalls to be able to access the manager. And the reason is the manager is what, the cloud manager is what initiates uh, everything, right? So the connector, which gets deployed on the on-premises side, the bits are provided by the cloud manager. So once I have the, connector bits, I'll deploy them OVA to the on-premises data center. Now, the beauty of HCX is we go all the way back to vSphere 5.0, which has been end of life for quite some time. And we just recently announced end of life for vSphere 6. So we go all the way back, older versions to the most current, just make sure to check the interoperability. As far as networking, we support, uh, 
a wide range from the latest NSXT all the way to a standard switch and of course a Nexus 1000V and storage. So we're basically abstracting the infrastructure to make it as easy as possible to mi migrate workloads across source to destination. Now, as we migrate these workloads, we, we can go bi-directionally and we can go over a AWS Direct Connect, or we can go over the internet. The requirement there is at least 100 megabits per second, and we're using Suite B encryption to migrate across. Uh, you'll see here in a little bit, we also have WAN optimization, dedupe, compression, all built in natively into the product. We also can stretch the network across with our network extension appliance uh, from source to destination. And before moving on, uh, the HCX interconnect you have there, is that a pair of VMs running on both ends or is it something else? Yes, so when we, and, and you'll see here in a, in a minute, when we create what's called the, the service mesh, which requires a compute and network profile, it will go ahead and deploy the necessary appliances. So the interconnect, the WAN op, the network extension on each site. So we deploy them in pairs. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just so uh, you're also aware, HCX is available via HTML5 plugin via vCenter. We also have a standalone client for those older versions of vSphere. And uh, for you know anybody who wants to do automation, it, we do have REST APIs and uh, Power CLI is available as well. So as far as the components go, we talked about the managers. Now, the, the managers on both sides, as far as pairing, the connector can pair to a cloud manager, but you can't have two connectors talking to each other. You can have two cloud managers talking to each other in the case of, let's say, cloud to cloud, but that's how the, the pairing works. And also, you can, it's a one to one relationship between the HCX manager to vCenter server. So let's say I have two vCenters that are linked. I would need two HCX managers, one for each one. And depending on the location, we'll determine which one I need. So if it's source, it's going to be the, usually it's going to be the connector. But in some cases, it could also be the cloud in case of cloud to cloud. So the HCX connector is like the remote edge appliance in NSX case. Yes, something similar. It just holds some information and everything is initiated from the source to the destination. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already covered, you know, so we have three main appliances that get deployed. So we have the interconnects, which are, you know, taking care of our intelligent routing across using uh, host uh, based replication we got vmotion we got nfc depending on if we're using cold migration then we have the wan op appliance and then we also have the network extension appliance which also gets deployed on both sides now hcx also comes with a bunch of features and services included uh, for, for this particular discussion, I just wanted to highlight them. We're not going to go into depth because we're more focused on VMware Cloud on AWS, but uh, we can definitely talk offline if, if you're interested. So as part of the deployment of HCX, and we're trying to make it as simple as possible, right? I mean, let's face it, doing extensions across data centers and workload mobility, this is not an easy task. So let's not pretend that, you know, we're going to say it's easy, but I will say this, uh, HCX does make it very easy to, to get started. We, again, deploying OVAs, 
creating profiles that we can use and they're all wizard driven profiles. So here with our compute profiles, we provide information based off of the vCenter that we're registered to. So our, the cluster that we're gonna to deploy to, the data store, what services we wanna use, as well as the network information. So management network, vMotion network, uh, replication, because some of the migration types require vSphere replication, which is also built into HCX. And then, you know, IP pools, MTU, all that. Now we build these profiles. And as you can see in the UI, after the profiles are built, we can now create our service mesh. And you can think of our service mesh as a way to group uh, the, the profiles and, and deploy the appliances. So our appliances don't get deployed until you have both a compute and network profile created. And then the service mesh handles the deployment of our appliances. And if you notice, the source is the initiator. So like I stated earlier, the pairing happens from the source to destination. And then the destination side, in this case, VMware Cloud on AWS, is the, the receiver. And when we do the extensions, you see here, so I have a bunch of port groups on my source. I got app, I got web, DB, custom. On the destination side, because we're using NSXT, it extends these networks, creating segments on the destination. All right, so the migration types that HCX offers are the following. So Jeremiah already covered cold migration using NFC, uh, HCX will pick it up by default as long as the VM is powered off. So you won't see it in the UI until the VM is actually powered off. We have vMotion baked into HCX, again, serialized live migration, no downtime. We have what's called bulk migration. Now, bulk migration is only available within HCX and it's minimal downtime. So what we're doing here is we're deploying new VMs on the destination side. We are replicating the data across, and then we have a minimal cutover where we're shutting down the source and bringing up the destination. And we, we keep the source VM there, it's shut off. So you can consider it kind of a, a backout plan or you know, you can your way back if you, you need it. But it does have minimal downtime. You can migrate hundreds of VMs at one time with no, no issues. And this can be done in parallel. The next, what we have here, and today this is not available for VMware Cloud on AWS, but things are in the works to, to get replicated assisted vMotion, which is no downtime migration. Now think of you know, this as if vMotion and bulk migration came together. That's what replicated assistant vMotion is. Now we can replicate the data across, but instead of the cutover being the, the shutoff from the source to the destination, now we're using vMotion to do the, the cutover. So it is definitely 100% live. And again, with this, we can migrate hundreds, thousands of VMs. Last but not least, there's OS assisted migration. And here, what we're using is OS assisted replication to um, my, copy the data from source to destination. We require an agent on the VMs. So what winds up happening is there is a Sentinel service that deploys appliances on both sides. Again, initiator, receiver. It will install the agents on the VMs that we want to convert over from, let's say uh, KVM or Hyper-V VMs over. It will bring, it will QS all the information and then it will finally shut down the source and bring up the destination. So the downtime there is just related to the cutover for the conversion.
again, mobility groups is something that is only available for HCX Enterprise. One of our, we have advanced licensing and then we have enterprise. So VMware Cloud on AWS by default has the advanced license. We are, again, this is a feature that uh, we're working towards potentially bringing over to VMware Cloud on AWS. But the beauty of this is, and you'll see in the demo, is um, the differences uh, between how you can search and find some of the workloads that you're looking for. So with mobility groups, I can search via folders, uh, networks, uh, tags, if I'm using automation, VM name, storage, uh, power state, things like that. And based off that, I can create what's called a mobility group. So here is a bunch of VMs that I have, but if you notice in this mobility group, I'm using different migration types. So I'm not bound to always having to use the same migration type uh, within HCX. So in this group, I'm using a combination of RAV and bulk migration. And I can create what's called draft mode. So I don't have to migrate right away. I can put it in draft, make sure that I create all my groups. And then when I'm actually ready to migrate, I can stagger them. So here's another mobility group that we created based off of, let's say, three-tier application. I got web, app, DB, but I'm using bulk migration to migrate them across. And then for my third mobility group, we decided to do this based off of networking. So we found our VMs on different port groups, and we're going to use replicated assisted vMotion. But this time, we're going to schedule the cutover. And essentially what we're doing here is we're creating waves, migration waves to move hundreds of VMs across. And, and you heard earlier, um, you know, we're working with other BUs to help, you know, the process of detecting the dependencies between VMs. So you'll see some more work being done on that front. So stay tuned. Also, this is, you can use mobility groups via API, Power CLI, and UI. And this, again, available for enterprise licensing. So for the on-prem to on-prem use case, definitely available. And then finally, I think we had a question on this, but yes, HCX can definitely be used to migrate between two different SDDCs in two different regions within VMware Cloud on AWS. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the demo real quick. I see that Steven is getting ready to cut me off. So, um, so the first thing you're gonna see here on the screen is we're in our VM and templates view. And, and the reason I'm starting here is I want you to notate the IP address of app one, right? Um, because at the end, just, just make sure that you're aware that this IP won't change. That's the beauty of HCX is we won't have to replatform. We we even allow customers the ability to make changes like update VMware tools, update VM hardware, things like that. Think of uh, going from Intel-based CPU to AMD. All right, so we're here within the HCX UI. We have our dashboard. The first thing we're gonna do to start migration we're going to click on the migration tab and we're going to click on migrate. Now, also here, you'll see that I have an update available and HCX, again, because it's a SaaS service, will notify me when there are new updates or enhancements available for me to go out and download. Now here, what we're going to do to find our VMs, so because this is the advanced view, I don't have that uh, mobility groups option, I can do simple searches from the search option. So I'm typing in DB, or I can do it via the vCenter uh, source inventory on the left-hand side from folders, clusters view, things like that. Now that we've selected our RVMs, we're doing web, app, and DB. So we have roughly around 15 VMs in this demo that we're migrating. We're going to go up to the global view. Now, this is where any configuration I do here will uh, be applied to all VMs, but I can also make changes at the individual VM level. So we're selecting our compute resource pool, our workload data store in VMware Cloud AWS. We're going to specify a folder. 
So here we're selecting workloads. We can keep the format the same or we can change it. We're gonna select thin. And then from the migration profile for this demo, we're gonna go ahead and do bulk migration. And then we can schedule the cutover or we can allow the cutover to happen right after the migration happens. Now here we have some extended options for the VMs and this is what I was talking about earlier. We can upgrade the hardware, the tools, we can run a script, we can do some DNS customization, we can generate new SIDs in the case of Windows VMs. And now that we have our VMs selected, we're gonna go ahead and validate. Now keep in mind, had I not done the validation and hit go, HCX will go ahead and still do the validation. So it, it's there to protect you against you. So now that we've gone ahead and validated and hit go, the VMs are gonna start to get ready for the migration process. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up a little bit. You're gonna to start to see that the transfer gets started. And once we see this transfer started, we can flip over to VMware Cloud on AWS and we're gonna to go to the storage view to start seeing VMs populate VMDKs there. So again, we selected that workload data store. We're going into files and you can start seeing the 15 VMs that we selected are starting to replicate on the destination side. Speed up a little bit more. So now we're just back on the on-premises data center and it will continue to do this until the transfer is complete. Now, keep in mind, I can also, as this is happening, I can stop the, the schedule or I can even cancel the migration. The end result here is you'll see all the migration starting to complete. And now we're back on the VMware Cloud on AWS side, showing the VMs in the compute resource pool. And they're gonna to start to power on. And as they power on, hopefully I was right and that app one kept its IP address. So Imad, sir, you said this also works with Hyper-V and KVM, so you can do the similar thing, install some agents on the hypervisors and do migrations. Is that how that works? It's not the hypervisors. It's the VMs themselves running. Oh, okay. So it's like or, VMware or Converter. So it's like an enhanced VMware Converter. Is that what it is? Yeah, but the beauty of it is uh, just real quick, you see the IP was retained, right? So awesome. no replatforming. The beauty of it is, is with Converter, you had to do a lot of legwork. Remember, yeah, yeah. you had to go in and do some of the cleanup, all that. With this, with the agents and everything, we take care of all that. So by the time the VM gets converted over to vSphere, you are ready to go. There's cool. nothing for you to do. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, it's not at the hypervisor level. It's at the VM level. It is, yes. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank yep. you. And then as you can see here within HCX, we migrated 15 VMs successfully. And then you can see all the information within the dashboard. Oh, can I have a networking comment? <laughs> As you retained the IP address of the VM moved over, obviously you have the ingress and egress traffic flow problem because the same subnet is now in two locations. So how do you handle that? Uh, so you're right. I mean, we, we do, and everything is going to have to go back over because the gateway lives on the, the source side. Now, what, and I can't go into detail because some of it is not available yet, but we we will have, I mean, we have some things now, but they're not available in VMware Cloud and AWS, but we will have things even more advanced that will be able to go in and take care of that and provide the best path option going forward. Thank you.